Number 37, which choice provides the best evidence to the answer to the previous question? Again, that it's going to stop slavery, the, the arguments would stop if we were trying, if we would stop trying to introduce slavery to, to our new territories. So I'm going to have a look first and see if I can get rid of any. Question number 35 came from line 67, which means I can get rid of 56 to 61 and I can get rid of 64 to 66. So let's start on line 74, starting whenever and ending in peace. Again, we're trying to say, don't bring slavery into places that are newly acquired. Don't bring slavery into places that don't already practice this idea or this concept of slavery. Whenever it was been limited to its present bounds and there has been no effort to spread it, there has been peace. I think that says it word for word. I'm gonna choose that one and I'm gonna move right on. Line 84, nature most nearly means, don't look at the answers. Line 84, nature most nearly means. Almost here at the end. Do you think that the, the way of man will be changed? The way of man will be changed? That the same causes that produce agitation at one time will not have the same do you think that the, um, we want to say something about their the characteristic? It's so the character. The way that they are, the character, kind of their, um, their personality. Their, do you think that the, the way of man will be changed or the character of man will be changed? I kind of like character. So let's have a look. Force, that doesn't mean a way, that doesn't mean character. Simplicity, that doesn't mean a way, that doesn't mean character. World, that doesn't mean a way, that doesn't mean a character. There we have it. Which choice identifies a central tension between the two passages? I've showed you this before, I really like this. I hope you do this automatically. And you decide, do you really, really know Douglas's theme? Do you feel so confident in Douglas's theme that you're gonna go with Douglas? Or do you feel really confident in Lincoln's theme that you're gonna stick with Lincoln's theme? I personally, I feel more confident in Lincoln's. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for the last half. I'm gonna just focus on matching the theme that I have for Lincoln to this, this answer. So let's see how we do. Lincoln argues that changes, so the central tension is, changes would enjoy no popular support. He doesn't say anything at all about what other people think. Lincoln dismisses those concerns as irrelevant. I'm going to keep that one only because I need a little more context. Lincoln argues that this criticism misrepresents his position. I'm going to keep that one. Lincoln implies that Douglas's interpretation is poorly reasoned. It's not true. All right, now let's go with Douglas. Which one does Douglas believe? Douglas proposes changes to, no, he doesn't, no, that's true, no. <laughs> Douglas says that the founding fathers wrote this perfectly. So he is not proposing any changes to anything. Douglas expresses concern about the economic impact of that. That's not, just not true. Just not true. Douglas criticizes Lincoln for finding fault with the Constitution. That is true. He's saying the founding, Douglas is saying the founding fathers came up with a perfect, perfect template for us to follow. So I really like that. And we already got rid of D. So the answer is C. Both passages discuss the issue of slavery in, ex, in relationship to the expansion of the Union. That's true. Very true. Questions of morality, it never even comes up in the reading. We're going to think that because slavery seems like a moral issue, but never came up in the in the reading. Religious toleration never came up in the reading either. And laws regarding commerce. Laws? Yeah. Are they regarding commerce? No. And then 41. 
in the context of each passage as a whole, the questions in line 26 to 27 of passage 1 and lines 67 to 69 of passage 2 primarily function to help each speaker. What are they doing? What are they doing in these ones? Are they casting doubt on the other's sincerity? I'm having a... I'm having trouble with the word sincerity. Casting doubt on each other, sure, but are they're not really bringing, evoking any questions about sincerity, so I don't know. Criticizing the other's methods, actually that never even happens. They're not talking about your method and your method. Reproaching each other's actions, they're reproaching each other's arguments, but they haven't reproached actions, so I don't like that one. Undermining the other's argument, okay. And so let's have a quick look back 25 to 27, what is Douglas primarily hope each? So what are they doing? Why cannot this union exist forever divided in a free slave states as our fathers made it? And then 67 to 69. Have we not always had quarrels and difficulties over it? But has it been so this element of slavery? Have we not always had quarrels? and difficulties over it. They're not casting doubt on it, their sincerity. They're undermining each other's argument. And that's it for passage one and passage two. Again, once we read for theme, we just were matching the theme to the answers. I hope you're starting to see that. I hope you're starting to feel more confident in doing that. And always, of course, we're really um, reading active reading, marking the text so that we can predict what the questions are going to be. That was fun. Let's see what the next section is.